Hello and welcome to this video. In it, we're going to be discussing the topic of layout points from Techler Structures. Specifically, we're going to be talking about what a layout point is, how to create them, how to associate them with a real-world coordinate system such as a northing and easting, and how to export them out so that we can use them with a robotic total station, Trimble Field Link, or just Trimble Connect. So with that, let's begin. So in order to facilitate our discussion about layout points, we first need to define what a layout point is. We have some tools in the Applications and Components side pane in Techler Structures that help us create layout points. The first one will help us create a single layout point, and that's just called Layout Point. And its dialog box allows us to uncover the properties of what a layout point is. When we activate the tool, we can then zoom into any piece of geometry, or what we call parts, and click on its edge or corner and start inserting points. When we do that, it creates a piece of geometry associated with that point in space, right? That piece of geometry can be a pyramid, a cone, a cylinder, or a sphere. We can change its color to have variety and denote visually different groups of points. We can also provide a name such as prefix, a description, say pad footing, as well as the size of the point that we're creating. Default is six inches, but you can make it a little bit smaller or larger depending on your preference. The other thing that we can do is we can associate a point with a group. Now this is going to play out in our layout manager found on the manage ribbon, which we'll get to in just a moment. But this allows us to group certain points together that form uh, for a specific uh, structure type, substructure, or task. And so in this case, say pad footings or foundations, something to that effect. When we apply these settings and then create more points, they will inherit these properties from the dialog box. But again, this is what a layout point is. It's actually similar to what you can see in field link. Um, and these play really, really well together. So once you create points, what do you do with them? Well, you can go to the Manage ribbon and open up the Layout Manager. This is a tool specifically designed to aggregate the points we create inside the model, whether from the single creation, point creation tool I just used or the one that expedites points, such as Layout Point Applicator, which we'll touch on here in just a moment. When we open up the Layout Manager, we can see I have two groups. I have two points in group name. That was before I changed any of the properties. And then I have one point in the pad group. I can expand that to see what it is. And it gave me, well, it gave me a prefix of F. I'm going to want a number associated with that. But when we select on the point here, we can also see its location in the model, its relative location in the group, as well as its location to the northing, easting, and elevation. Now, we haven't defined that yet, and that's our next step, but we can see the difference here. And we'll come back to this to, to see how when a northing and an easting is applied, a base point, if you will. But before I do that, I just want to go ahead and kind of clean these up so you can see how that works. I can change, I can select the group and I can say what base point it likes to work with. I can define its, its prefix. I can decide its starting number and the max length, a delimiter if I want. And then I can even rename these. And now I'm going to get something a little bit more um, uh, in line with what I was hoping, especially when you have some of these here. Well, we can go ahead and do actually move these to a different group and then auto name. So now I'm starting to move things around. When I select a group in the layout manager, it selects them in the model itself. I can isolate a single point. I can even zoom to it selected. So I'm able to find out what points mean what very easily within the model. And this is all great, except we need to get these out and associate them with the real world location. So let's take a look at base points. And then we're going to go ahead and create a lot of points very quickly with our layout point applicator. So I'm going to clear these out as our, we don't need them for the rest of our example. And let's zoom out on our model here. And we're going to go over to the file menu and then down to project properties. This brings out a pane in which we can provide all the necessary information about our project. Name, number, builder, location, address, all that sort of good stuff. And towards the bottom, we have an area dedicated to what we call base points. Um, if you have more than one base point in the model already, you can use the drop down to select which one you would like to uh, be working with. Uh, but if you only have the model origin, which is standard for new models, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, open up the base point dialog box. In this dialog box, we have the ability to provide basic information around a point in space. So I'm going to come to my model. I'm going to snap to plan mode because what I want to show you here 
is that I have an overlay here at my model origin. This is 0, 0. If I close this really quickly, I have my X and my Y, and you can see my UCS uh, here. If I rotate, you can see Z goes vertically, right? So this is important because when we start to establish a base point through our project properties, we're going to augment or tell that 0, 0 is something different than 0, 0. First and foremost, though, we got to give it a name. So I'm going to call it project base point 1. And here I can provide a description. Uh, it can be whatever is applicable to your base point. If this is the actual project base point, the control point, you can even check this box down here. You can only have one of those in the model, but you can have many, many other datums or control points that are ancillary inside of your project. We can do a uh, state plane or whatever the appropriate coordinate system that is that you're using. And then you would pro provide the decimal foot value here. I'm going to do something very simple to recognize and not a lot of complex uh, long numbers. I'm just going to do 1,000 feet in the east, 1,000 feet in the north. And I'll do 66 foot 6 uh, in the elevation. Now, with the description coordinate system, as well as latitude and longitude, these are informational fields only. They do not affect the position or the coordinates of any point in the model. They're meant there to be able to be reported upon, whether inside a report itself or on the cover sheet of a drawing or a title block of a drawing, right? So it is important to fill these in, this information out if you intend to use it, but just keep in mind that the three fields you're most concerned with are the northern, easting, and elevation. Right On top of that, though, down at the bottom, we can associate that position with a location in the model. Right, right now, it's set to 0, 0, 0 with no rotation. Right, That means it's at my model origin. But perhaps, based off of the distance from my, model, my grid origin, my model origin, I need to have an offset. It's really easy to do. We can do 5 foot in the X, and notice how the northing and easting adjusts itself from the model origin. Same thing for the Y. We can do negative 3 foot 6 and 7 eighths, or something more precise if you prefer, but just to try and illustrate how we can offset. Same thing for the Z, minus 13 inches. And it'll go down. You can rotate there. Okay. The last thing, too, is the rotation to north. This is really helpful in drawings and things like that. You can associate your north arrow with uh, this rotation. There you go. And so now when we snap back to plan and come and look, we can say, no, this is my base point. Or perhaps it was actually minus 5 in the X. We can always update and modify afterwards. Right. The idea here is to go ahead and modify this. You can lock it so it cannot be edited after you have established it. And then from here, we are free to use it. When we close this dialog, though, this is going to go away. It won't be visible. Ready? Watch. See? But it is there for us to use when we create points. So let's create a bunch of points really, really quickly. And then let's apply the base point to them and export them out of Tecla for use elsewhere. So when we were doing the points first, we were doing single points through the layout point tool. But we also have another tool called the layout point applicator. The layout point applicator is a slightly different dialog that allows us to do many points at one time. The way it works is it has three tabs. It defines where points are placed on a part's geometry. We can also define to, to lay out points uh, along grid intersections uh, or crossings or in the squares outside of the intersections, as well as what fields of the point we're populating. So this is the familiar part, name, description, size, color, shape, group name, that stuff we've already discussed, is located on the settings. And you can even create a single point from this tab if you need to. Um, but we're going to try to do a little bit more heavy lifting than that. So we have conditions, part pace, and selection filter. Conditions means, refers to the part itself, right? Like, do we want to place points on the edges, the openings, all of that, or just the center of the part, right? And then, well, what face of the part does that apply to? The top, bottom, front, back? all of them, uh, that sort of thing. So you have a lot of flexibility on where you want to tell this tool to automate the point placement for you. The last thing, selection filter, is meant to be selecting or excluding objects within the model, and then the tool will apply the points to the, the objects it can select. To illustrate this, I currently am using a standard selection filter in my model generally, which means I can select anything and everything, as you can see here. But if I use, say, the cast in place pad footing selection filter, when I do the same crossing window, now I'm only getting my pad footings. 
it's easy to get make sure this was working correctly when you create parts and concrete objects just make sure in the project properties you're using the drop down save presets uh, and everything's going to work with those those filters automatically right um, but once so what we want to do here is think about this in a methodical fashion i'm going to focus here on our foundations and so i'll come from the top here and we have some presets to help us get going. It doesn't cover everything you would probably want to put a point on in a project, but these are really great examples and the most common use cases. So you can use them for yourself now and use them as examples to create a couple other extra ones that you may want. So using the cast in place pad footing, and I'll even set my standard selection filter back, it's going to find the pad footings and it's going to put them on the end. Now it's important to note that for like columns and pad footings, the start being the yellow and then the end being the magenta point or node is at the actual top. That's the way it's modeled. So we want this to be at the end. That makes contextual sense, right? So I don't need to select anything. Just click the from all button and the tool is going to find those pad footings and place those points. We can see these blue icons that denotes that a component has been placed in the model. We can get rid of those by re redrawing our view by right clicking. Uh, and we can see that we have our points at the corners. I'll turn my concrete transparent so you can see it on the other side there. Um, we can come in and zoom and start to spin around and take a look at all of these. And you can see they're all there, right? The idea here is to work methodically. Start at the lowest elevation, go upwards. Do your foundations to completion, then move on to your foundation walls, and so on and so forth. And so select the preset, click from all, and it's going to go ahead and apply those for us after it thinks for just a second. And we can see I have a different, slightly different uh, visualization of the points itself in the model. You know, and uh, we would want to repeat this process and group them together in a way that makes logical for the way we typically work, right? And you can always augment that on the settings tab here for groups and things like that. But work through, work through the model methodically and then go to the layout manager on the manage ribbon. And we'll see a difference here. Now we have two groups. I have uh, just a little over 300 points total, right? And I'm selecting the pad footing. Notice all of those, and I'll zoom out. They're being selected when I select that group. Let's take a look at what it gave us. So it gave us all these 76 points. I'm missing a number here, which um, is easily rectifiable if it happens for you. If you're selecting the group, you can just update that prefix, right click and hit auto name, just like we discussed before. I've got a delimiter. I've got all the nice points here. Um, and I'm able to find one, select it, zoom to select it as we discussed before, right? Um, and we can repeat that process uh, for any group that we have. We can move, as we saw before, uh, points between groups if we accidentally miscategorize them or anything to that effect. And we can also change the order of, of, these, of these points as well. Perhaps we find this point should be point three or seven or whatever. We can actually adjust it and move it out of order and then execute the auto naming. And that's going to shift that for us. So now that's point six instead of point one. Notice, though, as we've been clicking all these points, our coordinates have stayed the same. And the key here is to make sure that we're using our project base point. Select the group. Select your base point. Do that for each group. OK. Then when we go and select points, you're going to be able to see that the northing and the easting has been applied here. And we can export with that. Right. Same thing for the other points now that it's been applied. So the layout point manager has a couple of uh, settings that you maybe want to make sure that you're um, taking uh, advantage of. If you create points from the manager, there's some settings to say what those groups and points are, the default group, prefix, starting number, all that sort of fun stuff. When it comes to exporting, uh, if you select the general export settings, make sure that you're sele selecting to feet, not meter, uh, a decimal, or a tab delimiter. And then these are going to be your column headers. Um, same thing for uh, LM80 machines. If you want to, you can go ahead and, and do your survey feed or this and that, as well as Trimble Field Link, and you can specify a directory to export to default by the settings. So once you set that stuff, you can come up here to the export. We can export to a TXT file. That's for any uh, robotic total station. We can do the CNX file format. That's for your LM80s. Or we can do TFL or TFLX for Field Link. You select the file type you want, and you're going to go to the export window. Now notice, I selected in the previous window just SF4, that single point. And guess what showed up in my export window? 
just that single point, right? Make sure that you're deliberate about what you're choosing to export. So if we only want to do the pad footings, only select that, come to the export, and it's going to load up those points for us. Conversely, we could also select multiple groups by holding down control and clicking and then exporting to that file type that we desire. And here they are listed. We can verify that we're using the project base point correctly, that, that it's being applied here, and we can select where we're going to save it. We can go ahead and give it a, uh, a name. We'll call Project 1 Foundations. Name accordingly to your company standards. Um, and this is going to save in our model folder under the layout and then Trimble job files subfolder. So this is initially where it defaults to. You can save to anywhere. Recommend in a place that's accessible by the crews who need this information. And that can be on a server here uh, in, your, in your company or in Trimble Connect. Um, and you can always save here and upload to Trimble Connect afterwards. We'll hit save and then we'll hit the export button. Very important and wait for it to finish. We can leave that open, but then go to the file menu, open model folder and then navigate to Layout, Trimble Job Files, Project Foundations. Here we are. And then you can open that up in, uh, in the appropriate uh, tablet for your field link, or to just do a plain text file. It's easy to do the same uh, points in different file types. You can just repeat the process. So no, no big deal. We can save there. It'll even keep the save name, same name, and we'll hit Export. And then bring that back and now you can see I have both a text and a TFLX file and we can open up in our notepad for just general robotic total stations that aren't necessarily Trimble your the best practice is always delete that header uh, kind of throws them off so you just get that hit save and it's good to go from here you can take these files and upload them to your Trimble Connect project or directly to a location in which your uh, survey crew has access to the points one final thought that I'll um, share with you when it comes to layout points is that it is often very useful to provide the model geometry with your points. You can always uh, go ahead and export an IFC from the file export um, menu. This uh, is a pretty straightforward process. We have documentation on our technical user assistance page on all the different uh, areas. You can just choose a, a, a standard or Tecla structures export um, or even um, something else like estimodeling um, to export these, these settings with. I would stay with standard or particular structures myself. Um, and then you can share that IFC, which is a 3D model export uh, so that they can use it in their field link tablets. If you don't want to do three dimensional, you can always uh, export to a DWG through the file menu, or you can create a drawing of a specific area of your model in the draw from the drawing and reports ribbon and then export that drawing layout as it would be traditional to, uh, for most of us to a DWG format uh, for use as well. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Want to learn more about this topic or how to get started with Techless Structures? Just check out this video's description for links to our user assistance page, getting started guide, and online campus.